This is a HeadGum Podcast. I feel like I'm going to be so groggy right now. Yeah, the groggin'. <laughs> you guys ever, like, stay up all night because you know the next night you want to go to bed really, really early, so you want to make yourself tired so that you can force yourself into, like, a new sleeping schedule, but you have to get through the all-nighter, and it's, like, disgusting. It's college throwbacks right uh, here. Uh, I hated having to do that in college. Yeah, it's probably not the best method of fixing a sleeping schedule. <laughs> How else do you do it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's why we do this, but, like... <laughs> I was up all night last night, could not get my mind to turn off, like... I know it was probably because I was looking at screens a really long time longer than I normally do in bed. (laughs) But also, this is just like a fucking wild time of our lives. Oh, yeah. But we'll get into that. We have a lot going on. But I just, like, couldn't get my brain to, like, stop thinking about all the things I had to do today and just everything that's been going on. And, oh, my God, it was so annoying. So I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to stay up. And then tomorrow... I'm going to wake up early because I'm going to go to bed super early tonight, guys. Yeah, we are going to go to bed real early. It is Coffee with Rachel, by the way. I'm Rachel. I'm Chris. And today we are drinking a bag of coffee all the way from New Zealand. Fantastic. This is from Bincho Ali McGregor, by the way. Yes. I wanted to say that I was just telling Chris before we started recording that it's just so wild that, like, someone living in New Zealand is listening to this show and, like, supporting it fucking monthly and then sending us in a bag of coffee, like, for all the way across the world to a place I've never been. Like, and that's how I feel about, like, everyone that has ever sent us a bag of coffee. Yeah. Because it's just so wild that, like, that happens. (laughs) It's really just really weird that, like, you know, like we said, we've gotten coffee from Japan and just, like, all of these other countries that are in Asia and Europe. I mean, what if, like, our goal was to go to every place that we got coffee sent in from? Oh, my God. That'd be wild. You guys should be sending it in from some wild places. <laughs> like, even if you just order it online. You I'm know what else kidding. is weird? Like, thinking about New Zealand, the fact that it's winter there right now. True. I always get fucked up by that. Yeah. And, like... Um, people that live there that are YouTubers and they do like winter makeup looks in the middle of summer here. And it's always like, whoa, (laughs) it's very weird. Just like, there's nearly not as many people in the Southern hemisphere as there are in the Northern hemisphere. So it's like, how does it feel to like have these wintry holidays in the summer? I I know like that would really throw me off because I mean, I, we obviously don't get, we don't really get snow in the middle of the city during like christmas time and stuff like that but i always associate it with cold weather yeah and like that's all the iconography of fucking christmas even it gets cold in california in the winter yeah like coldish you know chilly as they say (laughs) oh by the way so this is jed's coffee and it says just great coffee and this is the number four blend and it's very strong and very strong it's definitely strong by the way it says 100 percent arabica so now Ooh, we know. That means yeah. it's fancy, not robusta. Yes. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, shit. So this is some good stuff here. This ain't the fucking robusta garbage. It, it tastes really good, though. Like, it's it's strong, but it's not, like, bitter at all. It's very smooth. Yeah, nice. I, it's I need something strong right now, guys. Uh-huh. Definitely. I'm trying to avoid buying a latte because I, like, okay, so when we first moved to Seattle... This is my coffee fact. <laughs> when we first moved to Seattle, we were just, like, drinking a lot. I mean, we were broke as hell. So we were drinking a lot of, like, coffee that we were making at home, obviously. When we first got here, we didn't even have a coffee maker with us. We were French pressing every day. Because yeah. that's all we brought because it was smaller. Yeah. That was not fun. Because, no. like, I know that sounds luxurious, but you know how much time it takes to, like, boil water on a coil stove? When you don't have, like, an electric kettle or something like oh, that to yeah. heat the water? See? We should have always had this electric Yes. <laughs> By far the best purchase we've ever made. Best 15 bucks we've ever spent. It was us, like, French pressing coffee while eating, like, fries and fucking string cheese. And washing styrofoam <laughs> cups. <laughs> reusing the same cups. We oh, were man. a mess. But we weren't buying a lot of coffee out, needless to say. Because <laughs> we did not have the money yeah. to be doing that. And then we started doing, like, I would say, like, weekly we would go. And I I especially go, like, right after therapy. I like to get myself a cup of coffee. And it's like, yo, you did your thing. Yeah. And that was, like, once a week. Now I feel like I'm getting to, like, five times a week. And it's bad. It's, like, back when I was, like, in middle school and I was 
obsessed with Starbucks and Dunkin going there Dunkin all the time. Going yeah, before school and stuff. Or when I was working at Starbucks and I was drinking so much. So yeah. I need to cut back because one, it's such a waste of my money. Like when I can just make a delicious cup of coffee at home. Like, what am I doing? But yeah. Well, this common fact that I found is also a reason why you should cut back. Oh, God. And it's just that espresso has less caffeine than brewed coffee. Yeah. Uh, this says that an 8-ounce cup of coffee has approximately 2.3 times as much caffeine as a 1-ounce shot of espresso. Espresso does have higher caffeine by volume, but smaller serving size means you get much less of a buzz. But, I mean, that... What if I get four shots, though? Yeah, I know. Like, if you get four shots, then that's, like, two... That's, like, a 16-ounce cup of coffee. I mean, sometimes I shake when I have my (laughs) latte, and it's, like, the only caffeine. If I don't prime myself... Okay, so, like, that's how... You know how you're supposed to eat, like, a big pasta dinner before you drink? Yeah. For me, I need to drink one cup of regular coffee before I have a latte, or else I feel like crap. Yeah, true. Or a lot of water. That's or really, tea or something. That's weird. I have to, like, get myself ready. Hmm. Well, shit. <laughs> I know. But, yeah, I, this coffee right now is really... I need I need you. <laughs> yeah, and if this has more caffeine, then that's what I need in this moment in my life. Yeah. <laughs> so, things that have been going on in the world. Well, uh, before we get started, I do just want to say thank you guys so much for all the well wishes you yeah. guys sent. Uh, my mom had her surgery, and... So far, everything's great. She's back at home. Mm-hmm. She's just relaxing. She's got like a couple of weeks on some crazy painkillers. I could just... not believe she was literally like home the next day. Yeah, I know. She's fucking wild. She told me that, and I was like, whoa, wait, what? You don't have to stay there for a while? I don't even. I feel like some plastic surgeries, you stay there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even. Modern know. technology, I am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, though, my mom was saying that, like, it was all good. The only thing is that she just had to really fight my dog Bentley to stop jumping on her mm. because he's just like he's th- just wily, a big doofus of a dog. He's so a, lanky. He's like a, some part bloodhound or something like that, and he's just really bony and oh, yeah. muscular. And Yo, he, just he flops fucking on you. He destroyed a MacBook Pro. Yeah, he straight up destroyed my MacBook Pro. Oh my god! Actually, rewind. He <laughs> lost me. All of my Sims 2 content. Oh, my God. So this was back when I was still playing Sims 2. I had a cup of coffee near my laptop. Okay, I get it. But his tail. (laughs) And I lost all of the Sims 2. It was horrible. Love you, Bentley. (laughs) I know. And then I obviously had to pay. Like, I remember it was like 800, I think. Yeah, it was like 800 bucks. Oh, man. That was the only time that I've ever, like, spilled something. Good times. Not on granite, apparently. Jesus Christ. But yeah, other than like, you know, my mom's whole thing and like what you were talking about a couple episodes ago with like your oh, yeah. family reaching out and then our PlayStation 4 broke. Oh my God, guys. So horrible. It's literally... We didn't even do anything. We were playing The Last of Us, first of all. Finally played The Last of Us. First day playing it. We were sitting down for the day. We're like, okay, we're going to dive into this. And we were getting real into it. I was so into it. And I feel like we had only been playing for two hours. Yeah. And we've played way longer. If you have watched any of our Twitch streams, you know that we've been like streaming longer than like two hours. So like we yeah. use this thing way more... And we that was, like, the first time we had even used it that day. So I guess it was, like, the last of us, honestly. Yeah, it was the last of this console. Yeah, and it just, like, <laughs> it made, like, a really, like... It, like, you know when Lila's breathing a lot? <laughs> like it made, like, a really heavy, like, breathing noise. And then it just, like, she went off. She yeah. just turned off. And, and she never she came went, back. Yeah, she never came back on. <laughs> Luckily, we still have, like, our warranty and everything. We've only had it for a month. Like, honestly, I was what the so fuck? mad because... I pulled out, I got it from Target, and so I pulled out the receipt because I was like, oh my god, it, it's definitely not been a month yet. Like, I could just take I'm this. I'm still pissed about it. I could take this down to Target and I'll say, hey, it's broken, and then they'll just replace it. And, well, it was three days past the 30 day mark, so I could not do that anymore at Target. So now three I have days. to send it in to PlayStation to get serviced. Like, I have a year warranty, so I still have a warranty through next June. I know, it's pretty But, great. like... But now we have to wait for them to send us a box, and then we have to ship it back in, and then they have to fix it, and then ship it back to us. And, like, if we don't get it back before No Man's Sky comes out, I honestly blame... 
I don't know, me buying, like, the Anastasia palette. Honestly, I feel like the Xbox, like, secretly sabotaged the PlayStation in the middle of the night. <laughs> We've had the Xbox One for, like, what, two? It's been, like, a year and a half now, because I got it in, like, January of 2015. And, like, as much as we drag it, it has not shut off, like, yeah. from uh, anything. The only problems it ever has is, like, server Xbox issues, yes. not, like, the console. Exactly, yeah. <sighs> I'm so sad, so pray for that. That's why we haven't been doing a lot of streams, because, like, we honestly enjoy doing the streams more on the PlayStation because we can wear two headsets. Yeah. It's just easier. It's very easy. Xbox, come on. Uh, give, give us the option to have two headsets connected in one console. I'm like, just so sad about it, honestly. Like, I, and I was really into the game, and I don't even know if it, like, has our save. And, like, there's a ton of things that we want to play. Like, I got a couple other games that we haven't even played yet on Twitch that yeah, we want to do. Yeah, streams. Yeah. Oh, and we beat the kidney surgery. On Surgeon Simulator. So, so that we, we like, could do a new one. Yeah, and there's, like... So sad. There's tons of surgeries in that game that we want to do, yeah. and there's just a bunch, and so... So we have to wait a little while to get that So hopefully back. this gets, like, back to us really quickly, but... Yeah, and, and then there's just other shit that's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> Rachel's business. <laughs> Rachel's business behind the scenes, and I swear to God, I... I'm so I'm, over. <laughs> I'm learning to dislike the month of July, because... Girl, same. <laughs> if you don't know, the... For, like, businesses and stuff like that, they're, like, taxing their economical season year whatever it ends in june so like their end of year is in june and so and that's then, when everything hits the fan that's when they make the decisions whether or not they're going to cut or keep like different parts of their businesses when chris got laid off yeah so then you find out in july i got fucking laid off from microsoft and yeah. and now like happening. i'm i've just stuff i mean it's all fine it's just like another wrench in my journey. <laughs> another wrench in my. You've toolbox. got a whole fucking toolbox. Girl, <laughs> like, I do. You have a whole Home Depot full of wrenches. I fucking like. do. <laughs> and it's like all. Of, it's just like so random. And that that news came to me like really. I wasn't expecting anything. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like on top of everything else, like I'm just like Kim, enough. Like I just want to fucking chill out. You know. But I did order myself some new Nikes. Yeah. Which was very much like a hey. You're doing it. <laughs> and a nod to myself. And I'm so excited for them to get here. It'd be very cool. It's going to make all... Because I don't have proper walking shoes, guys. Yeah. For the amount of walking that your girl does, like, I'm doing it in those fucking shitty Forever 21, like, peep-toe heels. <laughs> and it needs to stop because my feet look like I have been, like, walking on wet tar when I get home. <laughs> I hate wearing sandals in the city. It's like, you know, people always ask us, like, what's the biggest change about moving to a city? I'm telling you, it's the amount of layer of gunk on my feet when I wear sandals, so much so that I just, just wear don't. boots. And now I have sneakers. And it kind of makes me understand why people would want to do socks on their sandals, but that's never oh, the something I would look ever... Here do willingly so yo are you gonna shade me for the fact that i really do kind of want some birkenstocks and i want to be that much seattle i right now oh have a cart filled at rei online <laughs> like i have stuff in my cart at rei like who the fuck this am is I? our lives that's how you know you've been here long enough <laughs> but i'm getting myself like a parka that's like a rain shell that's like super lightweight because i really need something like that here when it's raining and it's still kind of warm we are fully morphing into seattle if i get those the birkenstocks and i just totally throw away all my bras i <laughs> and that's why i don't wear makeup because oh, i'm like I, I, I honestly i'm just like i i rarely see people with full beat makeup. Yeah. Except for people that are working in makeup. Yeah. Like at Nordstrom. Oh, stuff. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't count though. Like walking around, I don't see a lot of makeup and it's mm -hmm. so weird. But it's also kind of nice. But I hope people are wearing sunscreen. <laughs> because even though it's cloudy, you still got to protect the face. Exactly. The visage. Those UVs. Yeah. They'll get you. They're coming for you. So can we talk about the Republican <laughs> committee convention situation? Yeah. The, a lot of things happened. You know, I I was kind of expecting there, like, there was rumors that, like, the Republican Party was going to, like, throw a pseudo coup and, like, come up with, like, some representative that they wanted to overthrow Trump with as their nominee but like Whoa, that, I did not hear about that. That like never happened. So Didn't someone burn a flag? I heard that. I think so. And like I think Colbert crashed it. Oh yeah, Colbert showed up the first day as oh what the fuck's his name from the Hunger Games? Uh Oh yeah, uh, I know what you're talking about. It's fucking 
Stanley Tooch. Yeah, Stanley Tucci, whatever, whatever his character's name is. Uh, yeah, he showed up and he was, like, making a play on the Hunger Games. Caesar Flicker Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Flickerman. Okay. Flickerman. <laughs> yeah. Yo, speaking of the Hunger Games, did you hear that the Divergent series is, like, they're not even making another movie for the last one. They're just making it, like, a Lifetime made for TV. It's not Lifetime, probably, but, like, when I hear TV made for movie. TV, I think Lifetime. Honestly, like, I was looking at the comments on, like, articles about that, and, like, nobody knows, like, when that's ever really been done before for, like, a so series. Because it's doing so horribly. Can you imagine if Mockingjay was made for TV? Oh, my God. Like, on Freeform. <laughs> Is like, what's her face going to come back? Because some of the actors may not even come back. Yeah, I said end. that they were like, some were going to opt out. Like, imagine if Triss opts out. Like, yeah, like, what? So fucking funny. The whole cast. I mean, everyone's in that movie. It's like, what? Elgort. He's in there. Yeah. yeah. I hope he, he's doing He's stuff. probably going to be the one that stays. <laughs> but uh, yeah. That, I mean, that book, I, I honestly didn't even really care for the book that much. I, read, I only got the first two done and I was just over it. I read Divergent. I was like... It's okay, but it's basically just the Hunger Games. Yeah, they just did it a little, like, different. Yeah. So the Republican convention. Yeah, so someone burned a flag. Colbert was there. Trump was not endorsed by Ted Cruz. And, like, I don't like Ted Cruz, but, like, man, was that satisfying. Honestly, like, it's a little bit respectful that he stood to what his beliefs are. Yeah. I don't... I hate him, and I hate his beliefs, but, like... (laughs) But he stuck to them. But he stuck to them, like, (laughs) so that's saying something. And, like, I, that was literally him, like, low-key being like, I'm with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, who else are they going to vote for Bernie? Vote your conscience. They're not going to vote Bernie. He's not telling people for free college. He's not telling somebody to vote third party. Yeah, he's, that was an I'm with her, and, like, we can all get on with that, I guess. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm like, what's the hashtag for when you're, like, you're not really, like, like, a Super Hill fan, but, like, you also don't want the world to end, so you're, like, I'm with her... I oh, forget. I don't know. There's, I like, an extra. That. That's who I am. Because I'm like, eh, eh, <laughs> eh. But, you know, Fuck. obviously not Trump. And, like, I get it. All these people that are like, don't tell me I'm throwing away my vote if I vote third party. I get it. Utilize your vote. I'm glad you're voting. However, let's just really... I mean, I think we should all just come together and hone in on the fact that we don't want Trump. Yeah, like, I mean, that's that is the unifying factor in all of this. Oh, <laughs> like, just nothing. Oh my god, so we obviously have to talk about uh, Melania. Yeah, like... How does that happen? a former f- or for a possible future first lady. Yeah, former first for, lady. Former first lady, no. <laughs> like, that is not a really good way to, like make your entrance into, like, the political world here. Yeah. I just... How... It's just ironic that it was one of Michelle Obama's speeches that she plagiarized. So if you don't know what we're talking about, Donald Trump's wife plagiarized, like, pretty much down to the word and the way that Michelle Obama, like, expressed it, um, a speech that she gave, like, two years ago, I think it was. Yeah. And it's, like, word for word. Like, how does shit like that get passed? Like, who... Because, you know, she... Obviously, she didn't write it because she stole it. Even though she said she did. Yeah, she's like, I spent a lot of time, like, working on this. Like, yo, like, honestly... What? What the fuck? And how like, does that? How does stuff like that go through? You'd think Olivia Pope would be like, let's, <laughs> let's not. Like, this is a scandal. You would think if you were gonna plagiarize a speech, you wouldn't do it of the current first lady from just two years ago. You'd pick something a little bit also, like it's not older. your party. Yeah, which what? is wild. I know. Like, take one of Palin's speech. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can you even uh, decipher that? Like, oh that's God. like a whole code. She speaks definitely in code. Oh I feel God, like yeah. when Sarah Palin speaks, she's crying out. If you just like rearrange the words, because you know how her <laughs> wording you play it in reverse. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like she's just there's a message that she's trying to get across, and that's why she always fucks up. <laughs> like, I gotta know. Oh my god. But anyway. I saw though that with the speech that like they were saying like, oh no, it's not plagiarized. She's just a really big fan of a lot of different influential people. And then like an, some like physicist or something like that like showed mathematically prob- probabilistically that like there's like a one in a like trillion chance that this was not plagiarism. And so they had to then say like, yeah, it was. Okay, like, good. Because I was going to say like I you could get expelled from college for this shit. Yeah, literally. Like 
if I had to make sure that a comma was in the correct place or my entire college career was on the fucking line, if I misplaced a comma and then someone thought I didn't properly cite a source and yeah, then it's plagiarism. Like, you cannot be first lady if you're yeah. plagiarizing. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That's like the biggest faux pas in like any form of speech, writing, whatever, I written know. word. God damn. <laughs> I just don't understand how shit like that can happen. Like, who, honestly, like, behind the scenes, because now, you know, I watch Scandal, so I think all this shit is happening, but, like, who behind the scenes, like, switched the teleprompter from her original yeah, speech that she never sabotaged. read, and then switched it with Michelle Obama's with, like, a couple of tweaks, and then she was up there, like, you know what I mean? Just doing her thing. I feel who like... Did that? I kind of feel like it was a sabotage, like, that... Is <laughs> Cutthroat <laughs> Kitchen. Yeah. Who sabotages oh get my God. your real speech, or <laughs> Michelle Obama's from two years. Oh, God, it was Bill. It was Bill Clinton. <laughs> oh my god. Honestly, I could picture him doing some shady things for Hillary. Can I don't imagine know. Imagine there being the, f- the first first man instead of the first lady. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what's... Are they gonna... See, okay. First gentleman. I look forward to that happening for the p- sole reason that, like, you know how the first lady has to do a bunch of, like, stupid shit that's just very, like... You know what yeah, I mean? Like if you watch extra. Scandal or House of Cards, you got to see like like they, the they egg, the that. egg thing, the Fabergé yeah. egg thing, yeah. or whatever, and like picking out linens. Like, are they really going to make Bill Clinton do those nun roles? You know I, what I feel mean? Like, like he's going to secretly like love that shit. I, know, like, I honestly think he would, but like, <laughs> just I feel like they're going to give him like, what if they like actually start like asking his like opinion on things? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's kind of fucked up. Yeah, I really hope that they treat him exactly like a first. Not a first wife. What am I saying? Oh, my God. A uh, first lady. Yeah. Yeah, like, I hope it's, like, the exact same role. It's just him. And he's playing with eggs and picking out China and telling I mean, like, kids there's usually, to eat no soda. Yeah, there's, like, <laughs> they usually get to pick, like, one thing that they campaign for throughout the entire time the president. What do you think office. his is going to be? I don't know. Aren't you going to miss, like... The so the no soda like eat your vegetables get outside kind of vibe. Yeah, no, I really respect like, I like Michelle, Michelle Obama. Did. Yeah, that was a, like a really good cause. That was to... a good focus. Yeah. I feel I saw actually. and with her arms, I believe anything she says about <laughs> nutrition and fitness. Oh my god, I actually saw that there's new rules that are coming out for schools that like they can have like zero advertisement on like even like a, a vending machine that has a picture of a coke on it or something like that that can't exist in schools anymore because uh, it's. Oh. bad and they can't serve like any sort of like junk food i don't know what they i would ju- love justify as junk food but like to be a fly on the wall in like a middle school public school it's like kids to see like what's the Oreos. lunch because like my lunch was like that shitty rectangle of frozen pizza and yeah a, like yeah. A, like an elio's pizza or something like that yeah and then like your various arrays of pastry items from like entomans slash a little milk carton yeah Yep. A little milk, a chocolate milk, and yeah. then, like, a honey bun. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's... And, like, the breakfast sandwiches, when you'd get to school early, they were, like, just, like, frozen, you Yeah, know? they were just basically, like, Jimmy Dean sandwiches they yeah. pull out of the freezer and Like, microwave. we ate, like, shit. We had beefy, cheesy nachos, and, first of all, there was a huge, like, myth in my high school that, oh like, <laughs> that the beefy, cheesy nachos... The grade of the meat was worse than what they served in jail or at Taco Bell. That was like <laughs> or Taco Bell. Yeah, <laughs> the bitch. It was like they were like, yeah, uh, the meat that Nishamini actually has is grade F, oh and God. that's the worst. And like, honestly, I'll believe it. It was gray. The that's fact fantastic. that I and it was literally just shitty like corn tortilla chips. A layer of like meat that was just ground beef, not like spicy, not seasoned at all. Just literally, literally was, just cooked ground beef. Yeah, and then. Like bottled mac, not mac and cheese. Oh bottled like nacho cheese. Like, like you pour it out. On Weber your... cooks. That oh you my did. god. <laughs> He's problematic, oh but god. man, those videos are the saddest. You thing guys gotta watched. look up those videos. They're fantastic. It's so much, but yeah, oh. that was. But anyway, yeah. What are the school lunches like now? If any of you guys like work in an elementary school, or I, like have siblings that are in, yeah, or something like that. Let us know let what us it's know. like. We should ask. Because we had vending machines. I would eat a fucking brown sugar cinnamon Pop-Tart yeah, every day after school. Yeah, all the time. Yep. And, so. oh, and the fruit punch, if you went to a certain vending machine and you held the button, you could get two Hawaiian punches. Ooh. You know, in the can, Packs. the red. Oh, man. And yeah. it was my favorite. I would always just share with whoever was cool that day. <laughs> like, that's how you knew. 
I hate how high tech vending machines have gotten. Yo, I get stressed when there's like the remix oh stuff. God. Like the the ones for like soda and water bottles where like there's a fucking like arm that like shoots up and it's got like a little carrier and it pops it into the carrier and then it drags it down. You ever see that shit? No. It's fucking wild. It's got like these crazy arms that move around and it like has a little cup and then it catches the bottle and then it carries it over to the little what part the where you pick fuck? it up. Where have those been? At work. <laughs> Why does Amazon have trash? <laughs> oh my god, oh, that's man. wild. You guys yeah. and your fucking bougie. I mean, ass. the vending machines like for like chips and stuff like that. They have touch screens on them to like punch in the numbers and everything. Shut the fuck. And up. And it has like a shopping cart too, so you can add multiple items to your cart and then you check out. What the fuck? You yeah. pay with a card. You give more cash, yeah, whatever. PayPal? <laughs> oh my <God>. Square? <laughs> That's so wild. Yeah. I hate when I go to, like, the movie theater. And, like, honestly, I was never one of those people in 7-Eleven that got a Slurpee and had to fucking mix things. Like, if you're that oh extra, <laughs> pick a flavor. Pick one flavor. Because Enjoy chances it. are, yeah, chances are... You're going to be a dumbass because there's not a good combo. And then you walk out of there with half root beer, half pina colada. And you're like, where did I go? <laughs> I'm in the Jersey Shore. <laughs> like, where The only I? thing I would ever mix is if I got an icy and I got Coke and cherry. Mixed. That's what I was talking about. Slurpee. Yeah. Well, yeah. An icy though. Specifically icy brand. Oh my God. Ew. You have brand... Like loyalty when it comes to Slurpee? No, I'm just talking about the combination factor. Like that's like the, the only blue time raspberry? I'll- yeah, but I mix the cherry and the Coke. Coke. Oh, well, that's yeah. just child's play. I'm just, I, I know. I'm just clarifying. That's my combination okay. of choice. That's good. That, that one I can be okay with. And I've definitely dabbled with that <laughs> myself. But I was a blue raspberry kind of binge. You just get a blue raspberry, you stick your straw in one place, you suck out all the liquid, and then you eat the shitty snow like a sad person (laughs) that doesn't taste alike a lot. (laughs) That would always be me with snow cones. I don't know if you ever did those snow cones, but, like, they would pour the syrup on it, and then I'd kind of just, like, put my lips on the little ball of ice and suck out the syrup, and then I'd eat the ice. (laughs) That is... (laughs) You know those fish that cling on to sharks? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) That's honestly you when you eat a popsicle, though. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, there are many foods that Chris eats <laughs> that, like, there's a look. <laughs> there's, like, Don't even. <laughs> ice cream, yeah. yogurt, popsicles. It's like I cannot watch him. But then again, like, how do you eat a popsicle that's, like, a rectangle without looking like a fucking idiot? Like... Yeah, you have to have, a, like, the skinny popsicles. It's a fucking hard thing to do, so don't judge me. I won't. <laughs> I won't judge you. How do we get on to fucking Slurpees? Who Where the, do we go? Who the fuck knows? Did we talk about the con- convention enough? <laughs> yeah, sure. we did. Well, I was going to talk about there's a new show on Food Network, guys, Oh, my God. And it is the funniest thing I've ever heard of. Is it a collab? Is it a brand integration with HGTV? We don't know. I feel like it definitely it is. It has to be. They definitely, like... Have some I think they're owned over. by the same company, so they like, have to. Just the way that they do their commercials are so similar. Yeah, and, and they the play twi- each other. The way they try to make their hosts fuckable. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not gonna fuck flip or flop. Okay, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not a flop. happening. Like, <laughs> it's a, you are so right. Oh my god, someone did ask me on Instagram if I had to choose for a threesome, would it be uh, Chip and Joanna and oh fuck, I think it was, uh, was the it Property flop? Brothers, oh, property and brother? I said no. I would do Hillary and David. Oh my god, yeah, that what is... You, if you're gonna do a threesome... Brothers, I could never. A threesome with anybody on the fucking HDTV, like, it's definitely David and Hillary from Love It or List It. Oh, absolutely. I mean, but... There's no even, other option. Yeah, or the voice of House Hunters. Oh, yeah. Just because it's just like... It's like coming home. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like we would bond. But anyway, there's this new show on Food Hour called Cake Hunters. And it's basically, like, heteronormativity. I mean, maybe they'll have some gays, but we'll find out. But, like, so far, it's just, like, a straight couple trying to find a wedding cake. And they have, like, they go to three different, like, bakeries. And they have this person, like, sketch up this fucking cake and come out with just, like, the top two tiers. And then they just argue. And everything is, like, so, oh, no, this color is too feminine for me, and you know, it's just like so, masculinity. Just so much heteronormativity. Like we watched oh. an episode where the guy was like, 
I want my cake to be beer flavored, which honestly, if you want your wedding cake to be beer flavored, that's I'm just not like, coming. I'm not going to have it. And I know chocolate and beer sounds great, but like, honestly, what sounds more white trash than the beer cake at a wedding? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> and he like wanted like branches over it because it was like, that's masculine. And then like the wife was like, no, none of that. I don't know. I don't remember what she wanted. But oh, I don't know. It was just like flowers and, you know, like just like typical pearls things. And stuff like, like that. That. Yeah, and like everything was like too much for him. Oh yeah, she didn't like the antlers, and he wanted them because like hunting, you know. Yeah, like honestly, you get the vibe <laughs> with my fucking wedding cake. Like I'm not gonna be that picky about it. Like it's. I picture it being like classic white fondant, and then like literally because I want to have like a woodsy wedding, then I would probably have like some real pieces of fucking like uh, whatever you know pine. Needles yeah. and a couple of cones, a couple of maybe like spray paint them a little gold, stick them, yeah. not like real spray paint, like food spray paint, you know. Gold leaf. Yeah, a little fun. gold on there, a little pine cone, a little spruce, and then, yeah, a little topper. And I don't think it would be like of us, it would probably just be like initials, and then call it a day. That'd be fantastic. I want my cake to be in the shape of Lila's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's get fucking Duff, whatever his name is. Oh my god. Okay, Duff have we discussed the fact that Duff. Goldman? I think it's Goldman. He looks exactly like if Tommy Pickles were alive now. <laughs> or his age. Oh, Like, if God. Tommy Pickles all, all grown up. <laughs> like, extra grown up. Oh, fuck that show. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, honestly, please tell me. I'll post maybe, like, if I can remember, a picture of the both of them, like, side by side, <laughs> who wore it best. Because, honestly, if I could just find him in just a diaper, it would be lit. <laughs> Oh my god. Tough gold minute when I was just <laughs> Well, we were talking about um, the voice of House Hunters, and that just brought up something in my mind. Uh, we found out that in the Nancy Drew game. Apparently, this has like, literally been new since 2014, and I'm just hearing about it. Nancy Drew, the voice of, is no longer going to be the voice of Nancy Drew. In the games. Yes. Her interactive, Dare to Play. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. I'm upset. I'm destroyed. I'll never hear her say, um, can't check that off yet. <laughs> can't check that off yet. It's locked. <laughs> Still have to do that. <laughs> oh, man. That's fantastic. And they're doing a new game that's about Salem. Yeah, I think it's time. supposed to be spoopy. I like the creepier Nancy Drew games. I'm just upset. Like, the voice sounds similar, but, like, just, like, off-brand Nancy. Yeah. And they're, like, making changes to, like, the actual way the game I'm plays or something like that. I'm scared for the future like of this it's game. Gonna be very interesting. I'm an OG... And D lover <laughs> um, since the days of time. Since I was playing on a fucking like window Dell computer. Okay. Oh my god. Since I was a playing gateway. on a Dell, a st- oh my god, a stupid cow box. Is Gateway the? That's what I meant. Yeah. Gateway is the cow box. My mom. I probably have said this before, but she literally got them because she loves cows and she wanted the box. I'm like, dead ass. How many of you guys out there had that stupid cow box in your garage? I, that you I had get one. Rid of? Yep. Yep. I just remember, like, that thing crashing every five minutes and her having to, like, be underneath, like, that giant built-in... You remember when you had to have, like, a big folding built-in computer, like, monolith in your room? Yeah, they had, like, (laughs) shelves and drawers and everything. Now I have literally just, like, a piece of aluminum and, like, no tower, no... It has one cord coming out of it for power and that's it. I love how chill that is. Whenever we get, like, a real house cord organization, I've already talked about it, is going to be all that I focus on. So much. I want everything to be, you cannot see where it's plugged in. You're like, where is everything? Outlets, even. I want disguised. (laughs) So that way, you know, when another fucking console breaks, it'll be a pain in the ass to get the cords out. (laughs) Yes. We already are finding this issue because we're so good at, like, hiding them already. Mm -hmm. But your dad's house, like, they're, like, in the wall. It's so cool. I wish we could be cool. Yeah. (laughs) If only we could drill holes in the walls in this no. apartment. <laughs> Fuck, living in like a concrete building, that's not where dreams are made of here. Because we cannot. <laughs> what dream tomato? <laughs> yeah, we literally cannot nail anything to the wall. It sucks. Everything is command hooked. And, you know, I don't know. Oh my god, we were watching House Hunters, and like this 
one house. It was like they were trying to be in Hawaii on like the really expensive beach yeah. that's like very popular. And they were like, they name dropped the Obamas. They were like, yeah, the Obamas like the have vacation a vacation here, here every year. And the first house was like the closest to the water. So obviously it's the shittiest because like the price value is yeah. for like location. And then their budget was like $1.7 million. Like. Yeah, it was lit. It was a very fun episode. But they go to this one bathroom that's like really needs to be a full gut, you know? And they zoom in on this one crusty low down. Like it's just this tiny little command hook that's got like a little bit of like staining on it. <laughs> it's like on the rim of the bathtub, like so sad. The signifying piece of decrepitness, you know? Like. They were like, yeah, this needs a lot of work. <laughs> they zoomed in on it. Also, because we've been watching a lot of, like, Food Network and HD, and they play, like, the same commercials, at least on Sling, well, who the hell decided that, like, roach killer ads were a really good thing to play on the Food Network when I'm, like, eating? I like to eat when I watch Food Network. Yeah. Because if I don't, then I, like, want to. You know what I mean? So I save, yeah. like, my snacks for when I get to watch Food Network. Yes. You know? I don't want to be eating my pretzels and then see you guys killing roaches. When we're watching Guy carve a nice pork butt, you know? I don't need, need that. We need to have something. I know. It's too much for me. I'm sensitive. I don't need <laughs> close-up shots of bugs on my TV. Like, it's bad enough that I got to hear commercials about, like, oh, this medicine's going to cause you diarrhea. Like, yeah. I have that already in the bag. <laughs> I don't need these bugs, do. It's still so wild. A lot of people were probably, like, confused by I just said that. Like, the fact that we advertise medicines on TV. I find it, like, I would never... I, I I didn't know that at first, and, like, it would be so wild to not be constantly advertised medication. Yeah. Like, literally, really every other weird. commercial is for medicine or life insurance. Yeah. That's it. It's Some like, sort of insurance or medicine. And I think it's because we watch, like, t- channels typically, like, older people watch, I guess. Yeah. So it's literally just like, <laughs> are you 65? <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> and I don't like hearing about it. Like, they're like, you should get your shit together right now and call ARP. I'm like, hmm. No, nah, I think I'm good. Or like, what is it like? A sta- a ca- a home for mom. A place for mom. A place for mom. And I'm like, where's dad? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, where's a place for dad? And they were like, everyone can stay here. But why did they name it that? Like, I feel like they really a lot happens. That was, that was not a good naming process. That's very uh, exclusionary. Oh my god. I would say. All right, so let's get into the questions for today's episode. So go over to Patreon. Yes, that's patreon.com slash if you want to find out how to support the show and become a super bencho with bencho privilege. <laughs> so the first question is, if neither of you were in the career paths you have now, what else would you choose to work as? Hmm. I was just telling Chris that I would love to, like, get really into pottery and just sell pottery for a living. And Honestly, just, like, have a place to throw. And that would just be so therapeutic. I love making things with my hands. I could sell it. I could also gift them to friends and family. Mm -hmm. I just think it would be rewarding as hell. Plus, I get to be creative. Mm -hmm. Thinking about, like, just, like, being, having an artistic, like, profession in general, but especially one like pottery where you're, like, really getting your hands dirty in it, how therapeutic that could really be when you're just sitting Like, I'm sure it's hard to get that kind of thing off the ground, but I feel like there's always a demand for people to have custom-made pottery pieces. Yeah, exactly. Like, ceramics in general. Or Instagram pages. (laughs) Yeah, I would, well, in that case, I would absolutely have an Etsy page and an Instagram like where I would post pictures of it, and yeah, the videos of you. And the, yeah, yeah. I, that, that's what I would be doing if I never got into it. And maybe it's what I'll do later in life. Yeah. Like I'll just have a, a, you know, I can't do that in a studio apartment. <laughs> but like, if there's like a place that I could go to, I don't know. But you'd have to get like a kiln. I mean, like I know this girl that like lives here. And I follow her on Instagram, and she has just, like, a small wheel and, like, a baby little kiln. And she doesn't really make anything larger than, like, a mug size kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. I mean, I would like to be doing, like, taller things. but Bases and stuff like that. I would just like to be doing it in general. I mean, if I could just, like, even just right now, like, get into a class. I know someone, like, asked about hobbies that we were going to talk about in a little bit. But, I mean, that's definitely something that I wish I could get back into. Because I only, like, dabbled in it for, like, a few years when I was still in school. And now... Mm -hmm. 
I'd like to do it again. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Plus, I um, always liked clay when I was a kid. <laughs> always. That was like, if you could get me anything, Play-Doh, go clay. get me Play-Doh, Model Magic, or clay from the craft store. It's all so I wanted to do. We got some do. Model Magic when we were in college, and we were just playing around with it. It's that for fun. A I like anything that's squishy, and it's just nice. Gack. And I loved any art class where we got to work with clay, or ceramics, or pottery at all. Mm-hmm. It was always the most fun, and I learned a lot, and I just want to like do it. It would be do so that. fun. But yeah, um, my career path would probably actually being in science, you know, yeah. meteorology or something. You I know, could see you doing like environmental sort. shit. Yeah, I think honestly, eventually in the future, I'd really like to get into transition myself into doing something like environmental awareness or like uh, research or. Protection. Yeah, protection. Yeah, that would be really fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that basically... That's like a computer science and a regular science degree, I feel. Yeah. it's a lot of definitely. technical ways of, like, trying to save the planet. Honestly, you know, that would be a job that would have me probably out in the fucking forest and, like, nature a lot. And that would be really cool. Like, yeah, I know. Just be out in nature. Just don't do any, like, tornado watches. Oh, I'm too no, no, paranoid no. for that I want to play with some trees and stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. No, no, no. That kind of leads... If you're doing anything about ocean conservation, <laughs> hit me up. Ooh, yeah. You know, I'm here. <laughs> you're resident. Um, I know everything about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that kind of leads into the question from uh, Taco Roach. Who yes. said, uh, what do you guys decide to do in the future? Uh, any aspirations you haven't acted on yet? For example, career goals or expanding hobbies into something more. Example, your music. Your music. Not mine. I mean, I still, I'm like getting back into my guitar and like having to relearn how to play. And like, yeah, I would just love, got that back, so. I would love to continue doing it. I don't, it, it's always going to just be a hobby for me because I just find it so calming to do. I don't like, you know, I can perform live, but I don't want to like record albums or make music for think, money. I just, I don't, I can't write music. So, do you ever think you will join some sort of choir or a group? Yeah, I would love to do that because yeah. I miss I miss singing every day and like forcing myself to use those muscles every day. Mm-hmm. And I definitely have lost some of my vocal range since not being in like, you know, training basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of sucks. But yeah, and like just doing a lot more things with my hands. Like once we have a bigger apartment, um, I, I can't wait to do even more DIY projects. Like there's already some things that we want to do that we can do in here or like out on like that patio. But like just having a bigger apartment would allow me to be like do a lot more crafty things with my hands which I really find fun it's a great time killer and I get to like make things for other people which I love doing I love buying people presents and I love making people presents like I just like yeah giving people shit mm-hmm. like literally it's just like it just makes you know if I can do anything like, I don't know I just like it it's fun for me I like picking out things that I think people are gonna like if I could be someone's personal shopper I would Oh my god. You know what I mean? I just like buying things for people and shopping for them. Like, it's fun. (sighs) If aspirations I want to do, I mean, it's. I've really just like. I've realized now, like, I'm doing work in like social media right now and stuff like that and like in an office and like I am enjoying it and it's fine and it's another cool thing that I'm really interested in, but I'd really like to do something with like the earth and like with nature and stuff like meteorology. I mean, that was just like weather and sky stuff, but I, you know, it did a lot regarding like nature and environments and stuff like that. And I really miss that. And I miss just like learning about the planet and nature and weather and how everything works and just finding ways to, you know, preserve that shit too, because you know, we're destroying it. And so, I really want to, like, get into, like, conservation or... Yeah, even if it's volunteer. Yeah, or, like, making it a point to explore national parks and stuff like that. Yeah, because we have not done that. Yeah, and that's, you know, I always forget that that's, like, a really cool luxury that, like, we have in the U.S. I know. That we have the national parks. You know, like... I used to, I was telling Chris, like, we've been talking about it for a while, but, like, we've been trying to get back into being more active because I used to be a very active kid because, like, I was playing sports, I was outside all the time, I swam all of the summers or, like, was running on the beach, and, like, I just was an active person, and I enjoyed being outside a lot, and I feel like, you know, because I'm living in a city, you know, it's just, like, 
I make excuses or whatever. And I just like, you know, I have like, I walk around, but like other than that, like I haven't been doing like besides my yoga and stuff that mm-hmm. I occasionally do. It's like, I don't know. So we've been like getting more active clothing stuff. Cause like that was half our problem is like, <laughs> we don't Activewear. have stuff. Yeah. Like we, cause we never invested money in any of it because it used to be like, Oh, we have to go to the gym. Like I hate this, but now I want cute clothes so that when I go on like hikes or walking around like the city, like I actually just like look fine but I'm comfortable and like I can walk for a while. And yeah. that's why I got my Nikes. Like I'm very excited cause we're going to start doing like a lot more walking than we already do and that going on hikes. It, and I want to go to more parks like that. That'll make it more appropriate. When I'm going to get some Nikes or something too, like more appropriate because I have like two pairs of Chelsea boots. That's my shoes right I now. Know. <laughs> and that's the way I live too. Like I, I have a pair of like, I have a pair of Nikes actually that are like a few years old and I don't love them because they're like neon pink and they don't match anything I have. Yeah. And so I just don't like wearing them. So now I got like all black ones and I know that that'll go with like literally everything. And you know, my first step is like now that I have comfortable shoes that will look good with like my clothes that I already have, I can walk to therapy now, no problem. Because that was my problem is like I don't have shoes to walk up those hills. I was like fucking heels. Falling. Yeah. <laughs> like I hate walking down a steep hill when you're wearing like a boot with a heel or a like a, a just a heel in general. Like it feels so horrible. So like I was just like taking Ubers and I'm like fuck. They raised the price of Uber by the way. I'm so pissed. Now, it used to cost me, like, seven, like, usually, like, six dollars, but, like, eight dollars maximum for me to get from, like, pretty much anywhere around downtown, Mm -hmm. like, at a non-peak time. Like, I don't really, I'm not an idiot. I don't travel at, like, four o'clock, and I, you know, if I'm avoiding a surge now, it literally costs eleven dollars. Just, like, base. They just, like, yeah, that's the flat rate now is, like, eleven sixty, I think Same thing with Zipcar, too. There used to be a lot (sighs) of, like, seven dollar an hour cars, and now they've raised them all up to, like, ten. I'm so sad about it. So, like, I just want to, like, you know, that's twenty two dollars a week for me to get an Uber. Sometimes I don't do it because, like, walking back, obviously, it's downhill. So, like, I'll do that, and, like, that's fine. But, like, that's just... I'm, I'm done. And, I, you know, I hate taking Ubers because they're just, like... Unpredictable. I, I can get there. So now I'm going to have shoes. I can get my ass there. And I'm yeah. excited about it. Because it's a good fucking... That hill is a good-ass walk. Like, yeah. That, I'm going to have, like, the most toned fucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> Tone your buns. I'm ready. They're already toasted. Okay, the next question's from Nicole, and she said, Hi guys, I'm a little behind on your episodes. I just listened to the mental health episode, and I have recently had issues and a really hard time talking with my future husband about these depression issues. I know you said in this episode that you guys had some issues in the beginning. I'm totally there. What did you guys do to work through this together? I mean, we. this is still something like... I mean, Honestly, it, it takes work from both people. It's like... <sighs> it's hard. It's definitely a hard situation. We went to therapy together yeah. when, I w- when I first went to therapy back in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. and that helped a lot. Um, and, you know, I am also, like, you don't ask me when I get home from therapy, like, hey, what'd you talk about? But, like, if I have something that I talked about that would help us, like, yeah. handling things, then I bring that up. And, like, I'm always just kind of honest about, like, what I need and what I don't need. And I don't, you know... I don't know, hold back, I guess, like in letting you know, like what works and what doesn't work, you know, just because like, I have to be honest. Otherwise I'm just going to like be bitter. If like you say something that like doesn't really, you know, hit me the right way, you know what I mean? And coming from the outside perspective, it, it's still hard for me to, you know, I don't understand what it feels like. Yeah. And so it, I'm learning and it's getting a little bit better as we go. Oh yeah. But like, like it, you're the most supportive person ever. Like you're, you're my rock. Like you're great. Like something but that you say is that like, it's, a, it's like, it's any relationship, anything that you have going on. Like it's just, it's going to take like pull from both people to like effort really and time. effort. Yeah. Time effort and like just knowing that like if it's not perfect the moment that you have like an argument about something like if you're discussing like what's not working you can't expect like everything to be fine like the moment you have that like realization and then just like you have to like still work on it and like just don't give up you know just have faith that like you're gonna be able to grow and change and like improve and like I feel like our relationship gets stronger like every fucking second because Mm -hmm. we're constantly like onwards and upwards you know if anything i would say to your future husband that uh if you just are really like if there's something that he can do to help that he's maybe doing that he doesn't know is like uh affecting you you know let him know of that but uh, also just say that 
you're he's going to want to like fix it, you know, just like solve the problems, find the problems, and just resolve them. And so, just letting them him know that like it's just something that's going to take time, and it's not something that like you can just like do you can't one, fix you can't this. do one thing, and you're going to like resolve my depression, you know? Yeah, it's just like little small things, and. They Caring add up to a listening. better experience. Yeah. It's not going to be perfect ever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's my advice, I guess, on that situation. Yes. All right. So do you have some questions? Yes. So the first question here from Twitter is, are you more of a bloom and onion or spinach and artichoke dip? Definitely more Ooh, of the bloom and onion. Fantastic question. Definitely the bloom and onion. But if I had to be honest, like my appetizer of choice is usually... Like a coconut shrimp. If, like, I'm at, like, one of these, like, TGI Friday type situations. (laughs) Outback or something. Yeah. You know? Because nothing's better than, like, shitty coconut shrimp. A blooming onion is definitely a share plate, you know? Oh, yeah. You can't. That's just, like, so much. Oh. Now I kind of want one. Fuck. Oh, my God. Did you hear? (laughs) Everyone has been sending this to me. John Goslin from John and K Plus 8. Oh, he, I didn't see this. <laughs> he's now working, I think he's a chef at the TGI Fridays in Lancaster. It could very well be the one that you worked at. Because that was Lancaster. It was... I just don't know if it's like the one that's not in the mall or the one that's like farther. <sighs> Oh my god, that's... I just think it's wild. wild. <laughs> I didn't know that they were from Pennsylvania. Apparently, like, they got married in Hershey, and, like, she got... She gave birth to all those eights to, <laughs> at, at, like, the Hershey Hospital or whatever. I didn't oh, know shit. they were Pennsylvania trash. Well, damn. Damn. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> Especially the haircut. I feel like every PA person yeah, had a haircut. True. 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 All right. My next question here, if I can unlock my phone without dragging Always this up. Always the troubles. Um, okay. Who is your favorite and least favorite lost character? And what person do you think you'd be on the island with a capital the, you know, um, my favorite character is so hard. It's a tie between Sawyer and Jin. Uh, and yes. Sun. Uh, and there's too many characters and a lot of them are really good. All right. Top. Bernard. Top, <laughs> yo, like literally, I love them all. <laughs> like it's a problem, um, but I I love Sawyer. I love Jin because his story. Like you don't like Jin in the beginning, but he really comes through at the I end. Like, I like Jin for his arc. Oh like, yeah, his arc is great, and like everyone hates Jack, right? Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> and I like Locke before he's not Locke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you know <laughs> when he's um, just like a weird guy with an orange in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that moment. <laughs> oh man, and like Vincent. Uh, yeah, Vincent is great. I'm not a fan of, uh... Least favorite character, I would have to say... Walt, just because he makes he Michael made say Walt hard. <laughs> say, like, 500 times. I mean... My boy, Walt! Walt. I'm trying to think... Ah... Uh, oh, I didn't like, uh, Michelle Rodriguez's character. She uh, just fucked everything up. Yeah. She fucked everything up. And it was because, like, they needed to write her off the show. Because yeah. she had that DUI thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. Which, like, looking back, that's kind of shitty. Like, this whole situation sucks. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. I hate her character. It always is mind-blowing when you actually know the behind-the-scenes things that I affects know. the story. I don't know. Like, fucking uh, the Fosters and Jesus being recasted. But who would I be on the island? Who? Honestly, I feel like we would be Rose and Bernard. We're like, fuck you guys. We're just trying to, you know, Yo, do you our thing. you are so right. Like, that they is They stayed us. out of it. Like, season six, when they're, like, on the cusp of the island, like, before everything they goes They have their shit. own little hut, and they're just like, please go away. They like, got so mad when the drama got back to them. That is us. That we're is, just like, had, leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, that is actually us. Oh, I forgot about Juliet. Oh, my God. And Ben, even though he's a villain. Yeah, Ben... Uh, He's a cool character. I just love them all. I like his character. You're so right, though. We are Rose and Bernard. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have an email question here all right. uh, from Victoria. Cool. And uh, they've said, hi, Chris, Rachel, Squeezy, and Lila. Uh, I just want to preface this by saying that I love the podcast and I've been following Rachel for three plus years now. Oh, my God. Thank Your you. Cooking with Rachel videos are a highlight for me because they are entertaining and give me cool ideas on things to make. So most of your recipes are dinner-based, with the exception of the occasional smoothie dessert or other snack. True. What kinds of things do you guys have for, for breakfast or lunch? I'd love to see some cooking videos on those i'm especially curious about what lunch is like for rachel working from home without chris 
as oh, I yeah, live alone. Cooking for one. I live alone in the studio with my super cool cat, who you have kindly sent photos of. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, well, here's my problem is, like, I... I know it's because I need to be on a better sleep schedule, but I just... Are fixing that now? Yeah, we're we're working on it. But, like, I have problems, like, getting hungry. It Honestly, I'm... It's three in the afternoon right now, and I'm finally feeling it, and I've been up since five. Like, I mean, we didn't sleep. Yeah, we didn't sleep. I've been up. (laughs) Um, It's just, like, I don't know what it is about me, and I know I need to eat something in the morning because it's better for you to, like, have things going and moving and working because then you don't feel like shit later. Yes. Um, Probably the source of all my headaches, too. So that's Mm. that's why we haven't made any breakfast recipes because we rarely eat breakfast. Um, which is bad. Yes. Lunch, <laughs> I'm a snacker. I don't usually make myself like a whole meal unless I'm eating leftovers, which is usually what I do, by the way. Like, I just make, you know, extra food. I mean, I'm also making it for you as well or whatever yeah. you're making it. But, like, there's usually something left in the fridge for me, and that's what I eat alone, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, if, you know, we do, like, pasta or something like that, we usually make enough. So or there's rice. leftover rice, like quinoa. Yeah. You know, we just Veggies. Chili. Chili. The chili that we have the recipe on, we still do that and yeah. make a lot of that at a time. So or I just literally, this. like, eat a bunch of sliced vegetables and hummus or, like, just plain. And then I eat, like, you know, some pretzels and, mm-hmm. you know, a popsicle or something. It's kind of <laughs> It's boring. not balanced. It's boring, but, like, you make a lot of, like, one thing and then you have leftovers and you just kind of, like, eat that for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm one of those people that, like, at home... What I do is I go through phases where I eat one thing for dinner, like, pretty much, like, on and off, like, every other night. We have, like, two meals that we're eating for dinner at the time, and then we get sick of them, then we do new recipes. Yep. And it's the same with snacks. Like, right now, all I'm doing is eating cucumber, because the cucumber right now is so good, and I'm just, like, eating it like crazy. I'm just in love. Loving. (laughs) I don't know. I always used to eat cucumbers as a kid, and I still do now. It's, like, the great snack, because you're, like... You're eating water. Yeah, you need to rehydrate there, driving. Yeah, I'm (laughs) hydrating myself. It tastes amazing. It's crunchy. And, like, it's not like I'm adding a bunch of salt to my life, which is usually what I do. And between pickles and cucumbers, you are just, like, going to turn into a cucumber. I know, I am. (laughs) Honestly, I hope it's hydrating my skin. (laughs) But, yeah. Maybe we should... I mean, like... We're already planning on, like, fixing our sleeping schedule. Maybe we should, like, focus on, like, getting a breakfast recipe down at home so we can make a video. We should do, like, just the way to make the most perfect bagel and lox. Ugh, I want to. I just, yeah. I just don't want to get dragged for, (laughs) you know, using cream cheese and lox. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it sucks, though. Like, I would love to do, like, a video like that. I don't know. (laughs) But, yeah. uh, Either way, like, I have a breakfast bowl that I like to make. I mean, God, every fucking recipe I have on my channel is, like, a fucking quinoa bowl. Yeah, it's just little quinoa bowls. (laughs) It's so cheap. Like, it's just so cheap. Okay. Um, You guys argue, like most couples, but has it gone to the point where you didn't want to do a podcast that day? Oh, yeah. It has definitely definitely happened. happened. Or we'll just have, like, a really, like, hella heavy day and then we get home and we're just like fuck like i can't be jovial right now i just want to like zonk out you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but i mean we always just do it because like we make the coffee and then we know like we're just gonna talk about fun things and then yeah honestly like a couple minutes into it you know we're laughing and i'm having a good time yeah exactly it always feels like oh man like it doesn't feel like this every single time but like if we're not in the mood like i'm always like oh man this is gonna be like a lot of energy out of me i guess and then it ends up not being that big of a deal when i sit down (laughs) and record same with videos too i always like (laughs) ample The anxiety. Always amplifying. <laughs> Always there. You all, get there. <laughs> and it's like, who cares? That was nothing. <laughs> I know, but yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh, and then our next question is probably going to be our last one. Um, how do you feel about this? Ina Garden's tweet, and it says, Having so much fun filming new shows. I'm cooking with old friends, making lots of new recipes, and of course, I'm hashtag cooking for Jeffrey. Well. Oh, my God. I have heard rustlings. That I know is coming out with new episodes. I thought it was of just barefoot, but if it's new shows, picture Ina doing like I want to see Ina on Best Thing I Ever Ate or like Guilty Pleasures. Oh my Pleasures. god! Yes. Picture her centrally describing like a meringue pie that she had in the Hamptons. Oh, like man. I'm quivering. Like I'm ready. I Honestly, it should her. be like the best thing I ever ate is something that I made. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're so. Should be like it's actually my lemon bars, which I make those lemon bars, guys, and everybody says they're the tits. 
So if you haven't made Ina's recipe, I don't think it's uh, vegan. Unfortunately, there's eggs in it. But yes, yeah. If you're not vegan, you should check it out because it's a really good recipe, guys. <laughs> it's so good. Oh man, she knows how to go. She does. She does. Yeah, I'm very ready to watch all of her shit. Honestly, like, oh my god, the Food Network has a lot of new shows coming out. Apparently. What, a YouTuber that I watched, Donald Skian, I believe is like Skian. I don't know. He Donald Skian. He's Irish. I honestly don't know really how to pronounce his last name. Sorry, but he does cooking videos, and they're beautifully shot, beautifully done. All the recipes look amazing. I love hearing him talk, and he's just got really good cooking videos. And yeah. now he's hosting. They're doing Food Network Star, but for children and. I can't tell if it's Tia or Tamara <laughs> Maori. I always get them confused. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's her and him, and they're doing like a, ki- a kids one, which we're, we are going to watch because God, I love watching kids that? cook because they're like, so smart, and I love watching them all be like nerds. Are they going to give this kid a show at the end of it? I hope. Like, Wouldn't you? That's me. Like, imagine if... Oh, see... The, you kids, if you're a kid listening to this, fuck you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got chopped. You probably junior. are not listening to the explicit podcast. Um, but like, yeah, you guys got chopped junior and kids cookout champion barbecue, whatever the fuck. Honestly, There's always kids, kids baking championship. If you're a culinary kid, you've got you got like, so many chances to be on the Food Network. All you have to do is have like a fucking uncle that runs a sh- fucking restaurant in new york and then you're golden i'm so sick of <laughs> it's this. as simple as that <laughs> it's as easy as that and yet here i was as a kid desperate to be able to touch the oven was not allowed watching the food network absorbing everything and like if they had been like yo we have a kid's fucking chopped i would have been I'm embarrassing right. myself oh my god imagine me now like showing on a video like me reacting to my chopped kids oh my god whatever. Like, can you imagine it'd be so embarrassing you know that like video the vine of the one kid and he's like furiously whipping yeah <laughs> that's yeah. me picture me like as a kid sweaty wearing like abercrombie oh my god <laughs> underneath my chef's jacket oh fuck that'd be hilarious do you still have your chef's jacket uh yeah it's in my closet from Whoa. when i was a cheesemonger <laughs> cheesemonger well I guess that's the end of that. Yeah, that's the episode. That's all she wrote. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for having a cup of coffee with us. And, I mean, honestly, this just energized me. I was feeling really tired before we started recording. Yeah, now now I'm we're bipped. Now we'll be fine. As long as I don't fall asleep again. Yeah. I did take, like, one hour long nap. Like, at, like, eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, fuck this. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, thanks so much for having a cup of coffee with us. All right. See you guys later. Bye. All right, Benchos. Hey, guys. We're here. What's the theme today? Uh, This is you guys as what TV show you guys are. Oh, okay. okay. We did movies before, now it's time for TV shows. All right. So we're going to start it off with Nicole, who is the Colbert Report. A good one to be. (laughs) Carissa is House of Cards. Carol Cards. Sloan (laughs) Nolan is Burn Notice. Sarah Booth is the Boondocks. Allison Sense is the Jeffersons. Hunter Curtis is Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Megan Rackley is Gilligan's Island. Megan. Taylor Collins is True Calling. Heather Ann is Hannibal. Didn't that get canceled? <laughs> yeah, it did. That sucks. Everybody's like super pissed about it. I, I wanted to why. watch it. Now I feel like I shouldn't because it got yeah. canceled. Sloan Fuller is Full House. Emma Corbeil is Coronation Street. What is Apparently that? that's like a uh, soap opera in the UK that's been running for like decades. Okay, Who so knows? like One Life to Live. Yeah. <laughs> Danielle Manis is The Yellow Rose. Kate Convery is Flight of the Concords. Angelica Fleas is NCIS Los Angeles. Anthony Hood is Parenthood. Uh, I miss him. Talia Miller is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Leave your dresses, give you always. <laughs> what? Oh man, okay. Um, Jennifer Habgood is Good Eats. Daisy Blossom Dottie is Days of Our Lives. I love it. <laughs> Madison Greer is Sons of Anarchy. The sun always fucks me up when we do like a, you know what yeah, I mean? You don't yeah, pronounce you. it like that. Okay. Madison Wolf is Teen Wolf. Megan McNally is Mega Structures. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Skylar Medley is Falling Skies, another canceled show. Cat is Thundercats. Ilka is The Hills. Oh my God, remember that. <laughs> Corey, <laughs> Corey Springfield is Garfield. Josie West is the West Wing. Sarah Cook is worst cooks in America. Jennifer Cornwell is Roswell. Sophia Cock is Alfred Hitchcock presents. Ash Rozelle is Ash vs. Evil Dead. Mariah Hanna is Hannah Montana. <laughs> 
Nicole Allen is All My Children. Cody Castillo is Castle. Beth Fonseca is Second Chance. Uh, Sophie Adams is Adam 12. Chris- Sounds like a vitamin. <laughs> Christina Contreras is Control. Jade Holden is Dennis the Menace. Allison Dowell is the Ashley Simpson show. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, I watched that. Catherine Simpson is The Simpsons. Bridget Carey Davis is The Bridge. Marlene Naj is Veronica Mars. Cater Liriano is The Sopranos. Very good. No leering from Cater today. <laughs> uh, Rebecca O'Donnell is Becker. Kendall Berg is Dilbert. Allie McGregor is Allie McBeal. Wow. Megan Grilly is Boy Meets Grill. Oh my god. Chloe Killop is The Killing. Ian Murphy is How to Get Away with Murder. Oh my god. This time it's the show. Elizabeth Hallbrook is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Cassandra Buckout is Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. Honestly, I miss that game so much. Maddie Pullman is The Spectacular Spider-Man. Amanda Marie is Superman, the animated series. Jane Shell is Jane the Virgin. Jackie Bergiulio is Jackass. Camelia <laughs> Malky is Mall Cops. I love that show. (laughs) I've never watched it. It's so stupid, but I love it. Okay. Caitlin Whalen is Whale Wars. I guess Paul Blart was enough for me. (laughs) Lucy Ravenscroft is that so Raven. Cody Robinson is Robin Hood. Lauren Siobhan is Ren and Stimpy. I hated that guy. I know. It was so dumb. Taco Roach is October Road. Oh, I watched that too. It got canceled. Laura Perpon was on that. Allison Francoy is Franklin and Bash. Haley Cadwalder is Wally Gator. Uh, Sarah Seaman is Chelsea. <laughs> Dana Daly is The Daily Show. Megan Wilson is Will and Grace. Jackie Lampo is Bo Jack Horseman. We still have to watch that. Yeah, we do. Claire Wood is Everwood. Oh, wow, throwback. <laughs> Kelly Adams is The Adams Family. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Hannah Peterson <laughs> is Dawson's Creek. Jenna Gordonier is Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. That was a hard one, guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sasha Smith is shameless. <laughs> shameless. <laughs> Sarah is Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Bridget Dubin is Scooby Dubin. <laughs> Vlyn and Drew is the Drew Carey Show. Uh, Jax is Samurai Jack. Hillary Gay is King of the Hill. Anna Hernandez is Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Anamony. <laughs> Jennifer Holtz is Sleepy Hollow. Holo. Holo. Courtney White is White Collar. Elizabeth Dolls is American Idol. Oh. Megan Preyas is Private Preactus. <laughs> Mackenzie Knight is Saturday Night Live. It's Saturday Night And Rachel Evans is eventually going to get a Netflix subscription to catch up on all of these shows. God damn it, Rachel. Those, these are probably Get with the all. times. 2016. Yeah. All right. So, the rest of the Beach Bonches... Uh, they're just channel surfing. They don't know. They can't figure it out. Infomercials. Yeah. yeah. Oh, infomercials. Good So choice. we've got Allie Malone. Kathleen Wynn. Rose Barnett. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. We love you guys, and we hope you enjoyed this episode of Coffee with Rachel. Yeah, we will see you on Sunday. All right, bye. Bye. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>